Welcome back, everyone, to Random's Thoughts, Mythgard Musings Edition. As you can kind of tell from the more somber tone, this may be one of the last Mythgard Musings. If you've been living under a rock, or <laughs> if you need to be reminded, which I don't think any of us do, we saw it, we got this patch on Friday, mere few hours before I was going to go live on stream, which is the night before the end of season tournament at the time the end of season qualifier now at the time why is that well as you can see from maintenance mode and the very first sentence which i will read we're extremely saddened that Mythgard will be entering maintenance mode please see this post for more information now there's some features that were added that's not really what we're going to talk about today this is the post that was originally up on screen and i'm not going to read it to everybody although i did on stream previously i felt that it needed it deserved a live reading, and I also wanted to to do it myself to read it more thoroughly. So, what does it amount to? Well, this statement is from Fu, and long story short, Mythgard is no longer going to be producing content. We will still get ranked seasons. We will still have a client as long as they're able to maintain the servers. Any Mithril purchases will go towards paying for said servers to keep everything up. But there won't be an end-of-year championship, and we're not going to get further cards or any further, we'll say, major developments. Things such as, well, new cards, the story mode, other additions that aren't game-breaking. It is mentioned in here, and I'll touch on it briefly, that there is the opportunity, potentially, emphasis heavily on potentially, for... this our smaller sets to be released, however realistically, I don't think anybody should hold their breath. Uh, let's be real about this. This is... I think the first line says it. It's with great sadness. And that echoes my own sentiments, quite plainly. Uh, I did a long, ranty, tirade stream of consciousness is the best way to put it, I guess, stream, after this was announced, which was, again, the night before this tournament that I was planning on playing in. And did play in. We'll touch on that later. And I was obviously upset, distraught. I really loved and do love Mythgard. Mythgard was and continues to be one of the best games I have ever played. It's also especially weird, and I mentioned this in a long Twitter thread, that almost a year to the day, we got news that the Transformers TCG, another game that I was heavily involved in, a content creator for, was being discontinued. I want to say it was July 25th or 21st, something like that. So not, at the time of this recording, not that far off. It's a very strange feeling, and it it's not a good one, obviously. First off, I want to say thank you to the Rhinos for all your blood, sweat, and tears, making Mythgard, producing Mythgard, updating Mythgard, maintaining Mythgard, and going forward, I guess, safeguarding Mythgard. <laughs> it's, it's a spectacular game. Your efforts did not go unnoticed or unappreciated. Uh, and it's, it's very unfortunate, and I mentioned this in the long tweet thread, that the gaming industry, in my opinion, is not really a meritocracy from the perspective of the quality of of a game. And I'm focusing on card games here, but I think you could extrapolate that to other games. The game could be good and unpopular, or bad and super popular. It could also be good and popular, and bad and unpopular, but it's very hard to break into these industries as a smaller organization, as a lesser known game, and make something really big and explode onto the scene and suddenly you're the big dog, especially when there are already entrenched games, organizations, player bases in other areas. And I feel that that is part of the issue. Now, the other one, which is pointed out in this statement, pointed the wrong way over there, it's in the first paragraph, marketing. And I've mentioned this anecdote on many occasions before that I found Mythgard strictly through Googling. I was looking for competitive digital card games, tournaments for digital card games, and that's how I found Mythgard, and then I fell in love with it. And 
at the end of the day, I think Mythgard was a superior game to pretty much all the other options out there. Have I ever played every game? No. Do I agree with everything that was done with, for, and by Mythgard and the devs? No, of course not. But I can understand their reasoning. I can respect what they were doing. The game isn't designed for me personally, obviously. It just so happens to check virtually every box for me and therefore felt like it on many occasions. But uh, I think that the the highlighted issue here by Fu is, I mean, it makes sense. It's logical. It's a, it's appropriate. And the fact of the matter is that it's very expensive to, in general, just to do marketing. But let me ex explain it this way. How many of you out there have clicked on a Facebook ad? We'll, we'll say gaming ad. We'll say Facebook gaming ad. Okay, say you didn't click on it. Say you just said, oh, that kind of looks cool. Let me Google it. All right, you found the game site. Did you go beyond that? Like, did you download the game? Did you uh, purchase on Steam? Did you do whatever? All right, so you, you went that far. Did you play it beyond the first few days? Okay, you got a few days in. Did you spend money? Assuming it was a free-to-play game, you know, like, to that, if you bought it, then if it was a paid-for game, then that would be different. But it's a free-to-play game. Did you, did you spend money? Okay, how much money did you spend? As you can probably tell by this sequence of questions that at the end of the day, you may, even if you're fortunate enough to have an enormous amount of engagement on that initial ping, it's going to drop and then drop and then drop and then drop. And it doesn't necessarily have anything to do with the quality of the game or anything else related. It could be as simple as it was a bad time in that person's life. Maybe they just didn't have time to play another game. Maybe they were super invested in another game. Maybe they just didn't have the funds to throw at the game. Or again, tied to the first one. It doesn't necessarily have to be a bad time like you're moving or you lost your job. It could just be you're working a lot. You just don't have time to play the game. Or you're just a free-to-play player and you don't want to spend money. There are a lot of things and there's like a gazillion more reasons. I could go on and on and list them, but we can all come up with a bunch of reasons and they're all valid for why they didn't get there. And that assumes that somebody clicked on or followed that first ad, which isn't necessarily a thing that's going to happen. It sounds simple. We'll just run some commercials. How much do you think that costs? It's a lot of money. And you got to... There's a lot of work that goes into it. You have to set up the contracts, which means that you may or may not have to pay a lawyer, depending on who's writing them. Hopefully there's a lawyer involved. Uh, you have a bunch of other unrelated costs that are going to be either tied to the marketing or just the game in general that have nothing to do with actually creating the game, like developing cards and getting cards into the client. Now, it could be that you supplement these things, as Mythgar did with the in-game purchases via cosmetics or the cards themselves, but that is part of the issue. Producing that set, which is, to me, the primary thing. That is what the game is. It needs cards. You could buy cosmetics, but it's not necessarily going to fund everything if the primary thing is cards, unless you build everything around that being the case. Mythgard had some very spaced out expansions, and this is something I was going to touch on later, but we might as well now. I didn't expect the game to hit this wall now. Did I expect it to happen? Well... To some extent, yes, because ultimately, if you're not one of the big names, and we can all name those card games, odds are it's just kind of waiting until you, you hit that point. Very few, like, how many games have you played from the 90s that are still around, first party support? How many games in the 2000s? How many games from, like, two years ago? A lot, most games don't make it. That's just simple facts, and it's unfortunate, because a lot of the games that are still around personally, I feel, are far and away outclassed by some of their successors. Unfortunately, they have not been able to, to knock off the top dogs. There are a lot of reasons for that. I've gone through it on many occasions. I'm going to try and save it for now. But I felt that Mythgard was going to make it to the next expansion. And then we'd see, obviously, we get a population boom. And then we'll see where the watermark ended up. How many people do we retain? And then we can we snowball that to the next expansion and move from there? However, as I alluded to, I think we all kind of saw the writing on the wall to some extent when the queues were a little bit longer. You're playing the same people. 
you're getting people out of your competitive band. So that means, say, you're in champion, you're hitting people much lower rank than you normally would. It happens occasionally, but it's just more frequent than it should or you'd expect it to be. And a lot of other factors that played in. I think we saw a lot of the... the I don't want to say light at the end of the tunnel, but we saw the, the ultimate destination. It was just a matter of when we were going to get there. And as I said, I thought we were going to get another set and maybe have a chance to turn things around. And I've talked many occasions on many occasions about the different milestones in games, lifespans coming from closed alpha through betas, through launches, through set releases, through organized play announcements, to other promotions and all these things. And I think that Mythgard ran through a lot of those, and unfortunately, there were there were missteps or pitfalls, however you want to state it, along the way that hurt it. In addition to the marketing issue, which some of these overlap and tie together, I would disagree with people that point out other things such as game balance as the culprit. Ultimately, game balance impacts such a stunningly small portion of the population in any given game, not just even card games or myth guard. We're talking any game. Because the fact of the matter is, ultimately, there's very few people all the way at the top that you are one of the best players. And those are the people that are going to be impacted most by balance. At almost every other level of play, it's get better. Get a, In this case, maybe get a better collection. Because if you're just starting out, your collection's probably going to be hot garbage because you just don't have much stuff unless you outlaid a ton of money. And as a result, you're probably going to have a skewed view of balance. Now, that isn't to say that you can't honestly level a balance complaint against Mythgard. Do I think it was blown out of proportion in most cases? Yes. The Mythic Guard memes, the complaints about individual cards or strategies, I think they were way blown out of proportion. There were certainly people who had bothered them, and they put the game down for a time, or <laughs> maybe permanently, but I don't think that impacts these individuals that are coming in fresh face to the game and have no idea what's going on and just learning and just playing cards and having fun. Even if they are a competitive player, they have to learn the ropes first. And it just doesn't have as much of an impact as I think many people consider. I personally have level complaints and still kind of do about specific play patterns. And I think that that is an issue because you can have a balanced game but have negative play patterns. However, at the end of the day, again, what swath of the population is being impacted by that? Probably not as much as people would think. There are many, many, many other factors that would take priority over that. Not to say that they don't matter. If you create, not that Mythgard was in this state, but if you create a game that's wildly unbalanced, it's going to be hard to sell people on it. It's going to be hard to get people involved because ultimately... They want to play a game and they want to f have fun playing the game. And it's hard to have fun playing a super unbalanced game. But there are plenty of games that are unbalanced that are fun as a direct result of being unbalanced. So I just wanted to throw that out there because that is a common complaint that people throw out there and say, oh, well, it has to be this. It has to be that. There's no way that it could be something like marketing because the game has all of these awesome things about it. And once you get in, you know, you're, you're clearly going to stay. And that is not true. Mythgard does have an enormous, and I said this in the long tweet thread, an enormous set of everything, everything. I was blown away and continue to be blown away by the feature set of Mythgard. And to be honest, it's kind of ruined me for card games, especially digital ones where I look at other games and go, why do you not have an in-game uh, tournament client? Now, I've said that for a while, but... It extends beyond that. Why do you not have game recordings? Why can't I export and import deck lists? Why can't I see the deck list in game? Why can't I see my opponent's deck list after the game? Why can't... And the list goes on and on and on. And there's just... It's stunning how many things were available to Mythgard that are just not in other games. And it makes me wonder, why are the devs not doing this? Now, I know the business reasons. Or I could surmise the business reasons. Obviously, I'm not in on those private meetings, but it's unfortunate. And as I said, Mythgard's kind of ruined me in that respect. And that's before you get to the gameplay, which I felt was fantastic. And 
will follow me. I said this also in the, the tweet thread that Mythgard has left an indelible mark and it really has. I'm going to constantly, similar to other games in the past that I've loved, I find a new game and I'm going to say, well, does it do this? Uh, it doesn't. Well, what about this? Mm, I don't know. Did, at least it has this, right? Really? Maybe I'll hold off and go to check the next one. Like, it, There's going to be... My tastes have... Uh, have changed. It's just, I now have expectations for what games should and should not be doing. Now, it, it's, that's a me problem going forward. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. Mythgard, I truly feel, died an untimely death. Or, I guess it's technically in its death throes right now. It's not officially dead, because again, maintenance mode means that everything will still be live, and as long as the server costs are being paid for, we can still play the game. I didn't start out with this, and I will mention it now. I should have started out with this. I still plan to continue to play, stream, and probably produce content for Mythgard. We'll see at what intervals now, but I still enjoy the game, and while it's available, I'm going to continue to enjoy it, and I'd recommend that anybody that is enjoying it to continue to do so. As I mentioned, the announcement came the night before the end of season tournament then qualifier now since we're not going to have the end of year tournament it's just a the last official tournament there have been a number of people both in discord in my chat as well as a number of other locations that have said that they uh are interested in doing their own tournaments community tournaments and trying to keep things rolling i'm hoping they do i think it's going to be a big challenge but i hope that people will stay invested and will stay interested in Mythgard and I hope that we're going to continue to have things to talk about and fun to be had. Hopefully we will get the unreleased cards, although again, I'm not going to hold my breath for it. I'm hoping that if they can't be produced, at the very least we get a text spoiler for it so we can see what could have been. It'll hurt a little bit because oh, we're so close to getting this, but I think I, I would love to see what those cards would have been. I also hope that we get the high-level future story. Because the story mode was actually spectacular in Mythgard, and I really enjoyed it. And I would love to see what happens to Percy, where the story evolves. We're not going to get it in client, but maybe we'll get lucky and it'll end up showing up there. Well, where does that leave us? I want to repeat what I said earlier and say thank you to the Rhinos. I also want to call out Noah in particular, who is identified in Fu's, I guess, last statement here, that... I mean, Noah, you, you put in a lot of work, and it's mentioned that Noah is going to continue putting in work by helping support Mythgard in this current status. I know that Noah was the rhino that I interacted with the most out of all of them, and I did have communications with a variety of them, but uh, Noah's support has been incredible. So I wanted to call him out, give him a shout out, uh, and say thank you. Thank you to all of the content creators, all of the other community members, the <laughs> chat monsters that would come to all of my streams, laugh at my my <laughs> enormous multitude of failings, as well as we had a lot of laughs with playing the game and just enjoying our time with Mythgard. Where do we go from here? Well, as mentioned earlier, this announcement was made the night before the end of season tournament. I was able to top eight that, so I can officially say that I top eighted two of the three end of season tournaments. Unfortunately, I was knocked out in the first round of top eight in both. I made some painfully egregious misplays in the most recent one, which bothers me now, but over time, it's one of those things. It's a lesson you carry forward as opposed to if I lost a variance, which I think supports my earlier argument about how game balance, Mythic Guard, all those sort of things kind of go out the window. As mentioned, I have leveled complaints against Mythic Guard before myself. I think there's a distinction between game balance and play patterns, although they often overlap and directly correlate. But those are different, and again, I don't think that they are really the culprits for anything that happened here. I trust the statement that is on screen and has been put out by the rhinos. I take them at their word. I have no reason not to. At this stage, and I mentioned this a few times, I do plan on continuing to play Mythgard, to stream Mythgard, probably produce content. We'll see how it goes as other people, you know, what's the community look like a month from now. 
three months from now, six months from now, that sort of thing. I do still really enjoy it, and without being too much of a broken record, I'm going to miss it a lot. Eventually, we have to face facts that at some point the servers will shut down. It's just a matter of when. And that's going to be a very sad day because I've, I've really enjoyed my time here. I wish all the best of luck to the Rhinos. Again, to all the other content creators and people who were involved with Mythgard in finding new homes, at least within the gaming space sort of thing. Um, I think that kind of does it. It's just kind of a big sigh moment, unfortunately, in this sort of thing. There's a lot of thoughts that I have. I could continue to spew and kind of just brain dump everything. Maybe we'll have another one of these where I do so. I'm sure it will come up on stream. But we'll see. I guess until next time, everybody. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. And Black Lives Matter.